Hello. In the previous video clip on the principles of fine needle aspiration cytology, we saw some important aspects of rapid on-site evaluation as well as specimen triage. Now we are going to be looking at the smearing and the staining processes, the different types of stains, as well as some technical tips with regards to the actual performing of the FNA. So in terms of the smearing and staining, the first step, of course, is to make the smear. And this has to be done quite gently using another slide as the spreader. We then fix the smear, which I had briefly mentioned in the previous video clip. There are two main ways to fix. One is by air drying and the other is to fix it in 95% alcohol. These different methods will use different stains for the smears. And of course, this brings me to the third step, which is the staining step. So usually, a pair of smears will have two stains in our institution. We will have the air-dried smear, which looks usually a bit more purple, and this is stained with hemocolor stain, which is a Romanowski-type stain. And we have the alcohol-fixed smear, and this is stained with the Papaniculau stain. So the first step is to expel the needle contents onto a glass light. We will usually choose to expel it about um, one third of the way from the frosted part so that there is room to smear. And it's important to remember that the bevel of the needle should be face down so that the needle contents do not get expelled upwards and spurt upwards. Usually about a two millimeter diameter spot is sufficient for a good smear. So here is how we are doing the smears, and I'm actually going to show you a video. There are two ways to do the smears. You can actually smear in this way, which is with the spreader slide away from you. And the other method is to smear it the other way around, where the spreader slide draws the smear towards you. So here is one of the methods. This is a spreader slide. We just place it gently on without pushing, and then with a very smooth motion, do the smear. This smear goes straight into 95% alcohol, and that will be stained later with the Papaniculau stain. This is the second part of the pair, and again, very gentle smearing. And we're going to dry here with uh, the hair dryer because the smear is a little bit thick. The hair dryer must be held a distance from the slide so that it does not cause any artifact to the cells. And once we're satisfied, that the smear is well dried in air. We will then fix it quickly in methanol and then we will stain it 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, rinse it in water and it's ready for on-site evaluation. It's important that fixation is immediate. So for rapid assessment, we use the air drying technique. And sometimes, as I mentioned, a hair dryer is helpful, held at an appropriate distance, about a foot away. Uh, because this helps to rapidly dry the material. When we fix this in alcohol, there must be no delay at all. This is for the stain back in the lab using the Papa Nicolau stain. It is important that the smear goes into the alcohol immediately because any delay can result in artifacts. So whether the stain is fixed by air drying or by alcohol fixation, the fixation must always be immediate. Here is an example of an artifact, and this is actually an alcohol fixed smear stained with the Papa Nicolau stain. But because the stain actually lied around before going into the alcohol a bit too long, there was air drying artifact. And what happens when the cells dry in air is that they will swell. And also the nuclear detail becomes very hazy. So essentially this is an unreadable smear. Even though there are a lot of cells, we can't actually make any sense out of it because we are not able to assess the chromatin pattern. In contrast, here is a very well fixed smear and this shows lymphocytes and we can see that the chromatin is very crisp and clearly visible. So here are the two types of stains that we do. And the air-dried smears use Romanowski stains, such as Divquick and Hemocolor, and these always look quite uh, purplish in colour. 
It's very good for cytoplasm. So we can see the cytoplasm of the cells very well using the stain. It is also very good for background material like stromal material as well as for colloid and things like mucin in the background. But because these smears are dried in air, the cells will always swell up and therefore you can sort of think of the cells uh, in the form of a fried egg. Now this is the Papaniculao stain smear and this is fixed in alcohol. So when it's immediately fixed, you get a very, very good read of the nuclear chromatin. The Papaniculao stain is especially good for chromatin. The cells appear smaller because they do not have time to swell up. These two pictures are actually taken at the same magnification. And you can see very good nuclear detail. So this is actually an example of papillary thyroid carcinoma. We can see the chromatin is very fine and powdery. We can easily see nuclear grooves in the cells. And we can also see a nuclear inclusion here. And because the cells do not have time to swell up, we can think of these as boiled eggs. So boiled eggs versus fried eggs. And this is the stain that we assess for rapid on-site evaluation. Now I'm just going to very briefly go through a few technical tips. There are some common misconceptions with regards to the actual FNA procedure. Uh, first, that a larger needle gauge yields more material. This is not really the case. Uh, what actually happens is that when the needle is larger, you tend to get a more hemodiluted sample with more blood in the specimen. For thyroid, 23, 25 gauge needles are good. Even 27 gauge is very good because it can yield a lot of material. My personal preference is to use a 25 gauge needle. And this is actually also sufficient for making good quality cell blocks. Larger bore needles can be used for aspirating cyst fluid um, in the thyroid, for example. Uh, the other misconception is that if you use aspiration or suction, you actually get more yield. Again, this is not true. You tend to get, again, more blood if you use aspiration, particularly in a very vascular organ like the thyroid gland. So aspiration can be useful if uh, used in cystic lesions and also if the lesion is particularly fibrotic or hard. And this is to show you one example of an artifact. This is ultrasound gel. Um, this is a problem potentially because it may obscure the cells if it's very thick and also potentially may be mistaken for necrosis or even calcifications, sometimes even thick colloid. So it is important for us to be able to recognize this as an artifact. And how to avoid this is to wipe off excess ultrasound gel from the skin before the needle penetrates the skin. Here is another problem that we sometimes encounter in our smears, and this is a blood clot from the needle. It is essentially a needle cast, and we call them worms. So what has happened is that while the needle is in the lesion, picking up tissue, the blood actually clots in the needle, so much so that when we expel the material from the needle, we get this thick blood clot. And this is a problem because there's uh, often cells inside the blood clot, but they are completely unreadable because they are obscured by blood. So unfortunately, even though there's cellular material here, we are actually not able to evaluate it because it is embedded in this thick blood clot, so we can't actually evaluate the chromatin at all. Even the architecture is distorted because it is trapped with the fibrin in the blood clot. So this smear will be reported as non-diagnostic despite the fact that there are a lot of lesional cells. And how to avoid this is to spend as little time as possible within the lesion. And basically, it is not advisable to spend more than 7 to 10 seconds within the lesion, because otherwise the blood will clot and we will get this uh, entrapped material in blood clot, which is very difficult or impossible to read. A quick word on cystic lesions. The recommendation is to aspirate them to dryness, preferably under ultrasound guidance so that you can actually see, especially if it's a multi-loculated lesion, and then to re-aspirate any remaining solid areas because it is the solid areas that will give us the material to assess and evaluate the nature of the lesion. 
Sometimes cystic lesions just do not yield sufficient cells and we may actually have to wait for an interval repeat aspiration after a few months in order to try again. So to summarize, uh, a small needle will actually yield less blood but does not yield less material and a 25 gauge needle is very good even enough to have cell block material. It is important to remove excess ultrasound gel from the skin before the needle penetrates the skin. It's also important not to linger in the lesion for more than 7 to 10 seconds in order to avoid the formation of worms or blood clots. And immediate fixation is very important from the processing point of view in order to avoid artifacts. In the context of thyroid FNAs, cell blocks are useful for suspected medullary carcinoma, lymphoma, and metastasis. Thank you.